welcome to Take Two Radio. I'm Pam, your host, and joining me today is my trusty sidekick, David. David, are you with us? I am with you. Good yet. Good evening, everybody. How is everybody and, doing? And how are you? <laughs> um, I'm doing well, thank you. Um, Good. Were you going to say something? I didn't mean to no, cut you I off. Forgot. <laughs> you forgot. No, okay. I think I just lost my train of thought. I did this. <laughs> well, that happens. <laughs> well, we'll get to the show part of it now. So today we're very pleased to speak with Elena, Alana, Alana, however you want to say her name, because now I've been told that I say it like the Southern people do, uh, Stuart. And she is an award-winning actress, producer, author, and president of the Farrah Fawcett Foundation. Welcome back, Alana. It's been a while. Hi, Pam. How are you? Uh, <laughs> and you got it I'm right. Like, I'm self-conscious. I'm saying your name now. <laughs> no, you know, the funny thing was that when I first heard your voice and you said, Alana, I said, oh, my gosh, I thought you were from the South or from Texas, because I grew up in Texas, and that's what everybody called me, was either Alana or Lana Kay. And since I'm, you know, once I moved to New York and L.A. and everything, everyone pronounced my name Alana, so it's sort of kind of, you know, transformed into Alana. <laughs> but you can still oh, call me Alana. <laughs> 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 well, I at least have the name correctly, even if I, the uh, enunciation is different. So yes, you that's do. That's a good thing. I, I didn't call you Fred or something. So yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. We know that you're very busy with all of your projects and appearances. So again, thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome. I'd like to start out with a tweet that I received to pass on to you, and it's from Jojo Diamonds. I'm sure you've I know that her. name. Yes. <laughs> I know Jojo's name. I have yeah. uh, tweeted back and forth with her many times, and she was uh, a big fan of the show and a big supporter. Definitely. And she says, and I'm going to read it exactly as she wrote it, Love how she interacts with us people. She's a beautiful person inside and out. I admire what she does for Farrah Fawcett Foundation for Cancer Research. She's a giving, a very giving person. I always tell her she's discovered the fountain of youth, and her and George <laughs> Hamilton are soulmates, I think. And that's her oh, tweet. That's so <laughs> sweet. You know, one, one of the great things about having done this show and everything is that I made so many new Twitter friends, and I've just kind of sort of gotten to know through Twitter and Instagram a little bit a lot of uh, a lot of people that I probably wouldn't have have you know had the opportunity to know before, and that's that's been such a pleasure for me. It's really been fun. Yeah. Now, how did you take to social media? Um, how did you originally get on there, and was it overwhelming or easy for you? Uh, overwhelming. <laughs> I, I, when I when my book Rearview Mirror came out about two years ago, maybe three years ago now, um, I that was one of the things I had to do is I had to learn how to um, be on Twitter because I'd been on Facebook, but I and I even always I I was not a good person on Facebook really. I just was not very good with all of this, but I really kind of learned about Twitter when my book came out and started doing it and I've been doing it for the you know since and and I really love it I know there's lots of other things going on but I don't know how to use those Instagram I can do I only started Instagramming maybe I don't know six months ago or something um, but it's fun it's just a fun way to relate to people and and I, I really enjoy it. I wish they could. I wish they had a few more letters that you could fit in because you have to. It's so brief, just a little bit more. Just you know. <laughs> that is the hardest part about Twitter. Um, when I first got on there, I was overwhelmed as well because I had been used to Facebook too, and uh, didn't realize at the get-go that you only have 140 characters. So. 
Um, of course, over time, you get used to it and you learn how to abbreviate things or just say very short sentences and put out more tweets, you know. Yeah, but, yeah sometimes I'd hard. like to say more. I'd like to say more things, but I guess the only way I could really do that is a is a blog. And I just still never really got Facebook down, and they turned my personal Facebook page um, into a fan page. And so I I don't, you know, I don't work on it that much because I I always have trouble really understanding it still. I'm an idiot. I'm just sorry. I'm, you know, I'm a a, a computer (laughs) nitwit. And uh, (laughs) so I um, um, I have a wonderful girl that helps me with the Facebook uh, part of it. But I do all Mm -hmm. the tweets myself. I do all my Instagrams myself. There's no one else involved in in that. That's just me. And um, Facebook, I think, I'm sure that people... I don't know if they – I guess they, in Facebook people want to, you to, to be friends with them or answer them or whatever. And I, if I don't do it, I hope I haven't offended anybody because I just still don't really know how. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in my office, the, um, the uh, girl that works in my office, Chris, is amazing, and she, she helps me with it, and, you know, um, she'll post things or I'll ask her, to, will you put this up for, for me or help me or whatever um, – so that you know that I do, but I probably don't keep up with it the way I should. So I hope I've you know never offended anyone because I didn't get back to them or something. It's just because oh, I, I'm an yeah. idiot. I don't know how. No. <laughs> no, you can't say that because even with me being used to Facebook, they are constantly changing things on there. So it's it's very hard to keep up with. Unless yeah, I never got that daily, down. Twitter so. I like yeah. because I can understand it. I'm, I really mm-hmm. enjoy it. I don't have that much time. I sometimes don't, you know, I don't get to get back to everybody, but I do my best. Yeah, you do. You do very well. I see you on Twitter, you know, answering fans all the time. And even if it's just a retweet of somebody's tweet, believe it or not, that makes the fans happy. So and I only learned right how thing. to favorite um, tweets like recently, oh. but it was great because when our show was on, um, we live tweeted on Sunday nights with everybody, and that's where I really kind of got into, um, you know, conversing with the fans and people mm-hmm. on Twitter because it w- it was just kind of fun. We'd all watch it together and sit in my bedroom because it was the only tv in my house we could get it on well there's only two anyway but the other one uh so we would all pile in my bedroom like i don't know 15 of us all the family and (laughs) friends and 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 we would you know we had just so much fun tweeting with everybody um yeah i saw pictures of that on twitter at times and i thought that was wonderful that you guys all watched it together you know, one thing I want to say, though, since everybody probably knows, and it's been um, we've been tweeting about it today, is E did not pick up our show, and they and made the we kind of knew it was happening, or uh, we felt it was, but um, they announced it yesterday, and so all the you know media has picked up on it and everything, and it's we're all very very disappointed and very sad, and I've gotten a lot of tweets from people that loved the show and. I'm so grateful to everybody. So for whoever's listening that that did support us, and there were people who even started letter writing campaigns into right. E and everything, saying that they mm-hmm. wanted a season two. And I know you all were part of that. And I just want to take this time to just thank everybody. It really, really, um, gosh, it just meant so much to me. You know, to feel like there were so many people out there that kind of had your back and supporting you and. Um, so as I said, you know, I'm sad, I'm disappointed. We're all very, very disappointed. We're very disappointed in E, you know, frankly. And it it started out so great. And they did a great, I mean, they did great promotion in the beginning and everything. But mm-hmm. toward the end, you know, when our best shows were on, like our last four or five shows, they they just were not supporting us and they gave all our rerun times away to um I'm sorry to say mostly to I am Kate. Um well, which is all fine but but you know yeah. it it's very hard when you're a new show to mm-hmm. to catch on with the viewers and let all the viewers get to know you and know your family 
unless there are reruns. I mean, that's the kind of secret right. to all of those shows right. on E is that they keep rerunning them. And I think because they were so um, – the head of E! Programming was so anxious to keep Caitlin afloat that they um, – they gave away our all of our rerun spots and took away a lot of our um of our time slots and so it you know they even put our finale on the, our last show which was one of our best shows on Labor Day night on you know and only gave us one show and without any real promotion of it so you know I don't think we got a fair shot Toward the end, I really don't, and I'm I'm sorry about it because I think if they had stayed with us, the fan base would have grown. But listen, if they had canceled Seinfeld the first season or even the second season, it would never have been, you know. And it ended up making history, kind of television no, history, anyway. You're you're so you're so very right with that. There's a lot of shows like that that they don't. Uh, you know, let go any further. Nowadays, they expect people to grab on after the first or second episode. Uh, I've started watching shows, and they've canceled them after one or two episodes, and I don't even know. I'm like, what happened? And as, as soon as I go on Twitter, you know, somebody knows something, and they'll say they canceled it. So you've got to be kidding me. They said, no, the numbers were low. Well, hello. You know, you've only shown one episode, or you've only shown two episodes, and even with five or six or seven episodes, you're right. People don't get to watch it when they want to. People binge watch these days. And yeah, that's and people, what they have and, to take into consideration. Yeah, and people have got to get to know a new, you know, a new group of people. I know when I was told that when the Kardashians were on their first year, you know, people didn't really know who they were, of course, and right. their ratings were not great, And but they kept rerunning them, and people started to get to know them, and they started to connect with them and like them, and that's, you know, that's all we would have asked is just to give us plenty of reruns and, you know, keep promoting and, and all those things. And so I'm really disappointed. I'm very disappointed. And, you know, a lot of people were writing into Jeff Old, who's the head of programming at E, and asking for season two. But, you know, he clearly didn't um, take notice. And and um, E is owned by NBC Universal, And the people that run it there are terrific. You know, they're really, really terrific. And we're very grateful that they gave us the chance to do the show, you know. And and I feel like a lot of people really loved the show and feel like it was a great show. It was. It really, truly was. I have to tell you, I don't watch many reality shows, um, some that you've mentioned, because I, it's just overload and I've had enough and they don't have anything interesting versus your family oh my gosh it was such a breath of fresh air it was you know happy times it was sad times it was fighting it was you know making up but all in all you guys love each other and you're very supportive of each other and that makes a big impact on viewers like myself and we are not giving up we're not giving up. I'm here to tell you we are not. We are going to, you know, tweet, write, do whatever we have to do. We've been, you know, um, tagging Pop TV to possibly pick up season two of the Stewarts and Hamiltons. Um, and there's Netflix, there's Hulu. They've been picking up shows that have been canceled by networks. So, you know, right. there's a lot of yes. different options out there, and we're not well, giving that's up. that's what we're – oh, God bless you. Well, thank you. I mean, you don't know how much that, that means to us, and uh, that is what we are um, hoping to do. And, you know, our producers are very enthusiastic about the show, and they really believe in it, and they do want to take it on. And those are different um, avenues that have been mentioned, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, all of those besides other, you know, other cable networks. So – we haven't given up completely. I mean, we're disappointed, and, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, you never know, but maybe it'll be one of those things when one door closes, another opens, and, um, you know, I'm just, um, I'm disappointed for all my kids, too, you know. Um, yes. I, I really am, because they, 
they all put their heart into it. And it took a long time for this family to decide to do this, you know. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to do a different kind of reality show than the ordinary one, which is just all about drama and tears and, you know, Mm -hmm. all sorts of things. And, And, you know, we didn't want it to be about sensationalism or any of that. We wanted it to be funny because our, we are funny I mean, if our family is funny if you get you sit with us at dinner time and you're going to laugh i mean yeah. <laughs> we, you know we everybody has great senses of humor you know there's Sean who's got his like off the wall uh you never know what's going to come out of his mouth humor and everybody's got their own sense of humor and you know that's the kind of show we wanted to do sort of like a reality version of modern family but yet mm-hmm. with the heart, too, you know, because we do mm-hmm. have our problems and we do have our issues, like every family, you know. We're not without our um, our sadnesses and our disappointments and our struggles. And so, you know, that was that was something that, you know, I just felt, I think we all felt like we wanted to do a different kind of reality show that was, and that in did. the end was upbeat mm-hmm. and maybe in some way inspiring, you know, Mhm. And and you know it actually it it was inspiring too. Um I I have to mention because of you know a couple of your kids uh like Ashley and and Sean have had their bad times, but they right. get back up on their feet and they do what they want to do. I mean Ashley has his awesome awesome new EP called Act 1 out that I've listened to many times over. And I wish him nothing but success with his musical career. And Sean now started his um, clothing line, Dirty Weekend, and I'm so happy for him. Your daughter, Kimberly, has her skinny scarves. I mean, you guys are all talented and inspiring, and I'm just happy to see all of this going on for all of you. You know, when you see people going through rough times, you want to see the good times come back for them. Yeah, I think and that's I think that's really important too is to share that you know, we've all been through our struggles. We haven't been without struggles in in our family. Um you know, um my mother died of a drug overdose and mm-hmm. so God knows that's you know, something that's um that lives with you forever and and but you could you know, eventually you get up and you move on and you hope that your hard times can maybe help somebody else that's going through a hard time. It's why I wrote my book, Rearview Mara, because I wanted to share my story and my journey and what mm-hmm. happened as a child and how I, you know, how I got through it and and kind of it's, you know, it's based on that and keeping your faith and to keep moving on no matter what. And so, you know, now that this is, you know, this is kind of a sad time and, and – um, you know, it's one of the times that are kind of one of the dark times. And, you know, I have to remember to use my own advice that I would give to anyone else is, you know, just pick up the pieces, keep your head up, and know that, you know, that God has a plan. And exactly. And for everyone. And, you know, today may be a crappy day, but this too shall pass, you know, and things turn around. And so that's, you know, that's kind of the way we have to look at this exactly and i i did read your book i know we had you on the show before and i told you i read your book and i was oh my gosh the things that you went through and i mean i cried so many times but i was so happy at the end you know to to know who you are today and maybe things would have been different if you didn't go through all those bad times. But you are so strong, Elena, and I believe in you. And I believe that no matter what you put your mind to, you will accomplish. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. And um, I guess I will. Put, uh, I guess I will accomplish whatever it is that God or a higher power wants me to accomplish. You know and. I think that's what we all have to look at, you know, what's our higher purpose in life. And, you know, if whatever you're doing can help another human being, then it's got a purpose. Exactly, exactly. Well, with that said, I want to start taking calls because um, 
I know that we have people calling in, and they want to talk to you, and I know they got your back. So let's go ahead and start out with okay. Tarek. <laughs> Tarek, you're live on the air. Hey, how are you? Hi, Tarek. How are you? It's nice to hear your voice. I feel like I know you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I feel like we're pals. I, feel the same way. I think we are. I think you know, we are, too. But hearing you guys, it's like you guys are taking the words right out of my mouth. And unfortunately, I had not heard about E not picking up the show, though I think, you know, that was something that was definitely a possibility. But I'm pretty devastated to hear. Um, wow. you know, I'm really upset because I believe in this family. This show is so unique. I I absolutely I have two shows that I'm really really huge on and that's Stuart and Hamilton's and Queens of Drama and oh. <laughs> those are the only two reality shows that I'm not like really over you know it's like if the K network I mean the E network you know doesn't value the show then you know I think that there's another home for it somewhere I think Pop might be a good fit. And all the fans maybe should blow up on Twitter at B.S. Schwartz, who is the head of POP, and maybe put that out there. Um, That's what I will be doing. Well, you're so Um, great. Gosh, you all are all so sweet and so supportive, and I can't tell you how much it means to all of us. It really does. And I've I've only yet begun to fight. You know, uh, Brad will know. Brad Schwartz knows quite well that I... I can be a pain in the butt when I want to show renewed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish Jeff Old would have listened to you because I know that you were involved in all that, and I know there were a number of you that were writing to him at E and and calling and asking to renew the show. And, you know, unfortunately he didn't listen, but maybe somebody at NBC Universal who owns E will listen and put us on one of their other cable networks because they have quite a few. They have Oxygen and... And, well, uh, I, you know, also you've got you've got Bravo might be a good fit. Um, you know, it's like I I I'm over all the drama reality shows. I'm really over them. I I you know all the Kardashian franchises, they're just not relatable. You know, it's like I have no common ground with them. And when I see the way that your family interacts, it's like so touching, and it's so special that you guys have remained so down to earth. And just so awesome. And, you know, you do so much to help others. Oh, well, that's very sweet. Thank you. You know, it just just means a lot to me. And I will be hounding every network to get you guys back on the air where you belong. Well, you are wonderful. And I can't thank you enough for all of your support, really. It's great. And I um I know you've been through your own struggles and I'm I'm happy to hear your voice and hear you sounding so terrific and it does my heart good. Thank you so much. You you are such a blessing, such a blessing to me and you know, for reasons that you know. Well, thank you and you to me. Thank you. Well, thank thank you so much Tarek for calling in and uh, know that I'm behind you with uh, getting that out there so we'll get them done yeah yeah we're going to get it done and uh, John Simpson is definitely on board Um, you know we're starting to get our little grassroots campaign going like we did with Queens of Drama and that was really successful so oh and just a quick shout out to Crystal Hunt and Vanessa Marcel my queen (laughs) 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 <laughs> okay, thank you a lot, great. Derek. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Take care. thank you guys. Bye. God bless. You Bye-bye. too. Bye-bye. Okay, next up, uh, Tarek just mentioned him, is John Simpson. John, you're live on the air. Hey, hello, everybody. Hey, John, so how far. are you? <laughs> another Quite another well. Twitter friend. I feel like I know you too. <laughs> Yeah, we go back a little ways, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've been uh um I know you've been a you've been a big supporter of the show and thank you so much and all of us and Ashley's music and everything and that mm-hmm. means uh that means so much to us. Well, it's my pleasure, you know. It's 
it's all real. And that was one of the things about your show that I really liked was that, you know, there was a, you know, I echo Tarek and everybody else's sentiments on Twitter who's in favor of you guys, right? You, you definitely had uh, something that the other shows didn't have and letting, you know, opening up your home uh, for eight episodes to the world is quite a, uh, quite a challenge and a lot of things I'm sure. Um, but it was very entertaining and enlightening, at least from my perspective. And, you know, it's great to see um, the interaction of the family. And as you pointed out with Ashley, uh, you know, uh, several things came out of it for me. Uh, one of them certainly was Ashley's music. I'm a huge fan, as, as you obviously know, as I am of the show. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, there's something that your, your show offers things that you just don't get anywhere else. You know, it's real. It's about real people, real experiences. And I think people get that. They can relate to that. Um, and, you know, and to your point, uh, Alana, if I'm pronouncing it right, I'm not from Texas. Oh, so you I'll are, say, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but you can call me Alana, too, like Pam does. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, but I know I can't go wrong. Um, you know, there is, when a door closes, another one opens up. That's very true. And, you know, Alana, as you pointed out, they uh, Eve may not have given you uh, the chance they should have. And I definitely agree with that. You know, I'm sure Jeff has his reasons for whatever and, you know, Kate and that whole franchise, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, people, um, you know, when, when they're given the chance to recognize something, they generally do, especially when they can relate to it, that empathetic component that you just don't get on most shows. Uh, and you guys really brought that out. It's just, you know, I don't think anybody could really take that away from you. I, obviously, I want to see the show picked up uh, in its same form or another, whatever. Uh, but the cast, as a cast, uh, there's a great connection between all of you, and that's a phenomenal thing to see. Um, but I would like to ask you one question, if I can. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and that is, what would you say about Stuarts and Hamiltons if you were a TV critic? In other words, if you're on the outside looking in, how would you describe it? I'm very curious. Oh, my gosh. Well, it depends on, it, from coming from a TV critic's point of view, it depends on if they liked it or hated it. <laughs> Everybody has their own opinion. <laughs> But, you know, we did in the very beginning when the show came out, we did get good good reviews uh, for the most part. I mean, um, right. like Us Magazine gave us three out of four stars, and, you know, people people really did seem to like it. So I don't know if I were reviewing it. It's so hard to be objective about yourself, but I think that I would say that it's kind of a a different kind of reality show and that it's – it's fun. It's 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 got its certainly lighthearted moments, and but it's also real. And you know, it's got it's got heart to it because we did open up our our homes and our hearts to everyone. And right. but more than anything, I I would hope they would say that that they're apart from being funny and fun and and lighthearted and laughter that there are some real moments where you get to see people in their real struggles and come through them and hopefully it might just benefit somebody else. You know, I said earlier, if anything you do in life helps one person, that makes it worthwhile. Absolutely. So a second career for you could be a TV critic because that is probably the best review verbally that I could imagine for your show. You summed <laughs> well, it up beautifully, right? <laughs> Since it, it, I mean, it sums up the show, right? Your personality from the show just came out in this uh, in that question. You know, you're very sincere. You're very honest about it. You're objective about it. And you recognize what it has versus other shows. And I, and I don't think that you have to work at that. It sounds like that's just part of your personality coming out. And the whole show felt like that to me, which was one of the reasons I enjoyed it. It, it, it didn't take any effort to watch the show. There was never any effort in trying to figure out, you know, how's George related to so-and-so? What's Ashley doing? What's Kimberly up to? What's Sean going to do next? And then Pablo. Right? You never had to oh, work yes, at it. Oh, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> well, right? We all love Pablo. <laughs> yeah, how can you not, right? And then that tux, right? He looked great. Um, but the point is, you know, it's, it's effortless watching. And at least for me, you know, at the end of every episode, I would say to myself, hey, I can't believe the show's over already. It went by mm -hmm. so fast, you know, on an episode by episode basis. But that's thank you to think to yourself. You know what? Yeah. That's the best um, compliment you can give a show, I think, is to say the show went yeah, by so yeah. fast. I mean, thank you for that, because that, that, that really is the best compliment a show can get. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Well, yeah, right. I mean, and, and thanks for pointing that out. I mean, I, I, again, it's it's real. You know, it's just something that you can't really fake. Um, and, you know, to your point, Alana, E did not give it a fair shake. You're right. By them taking away some of your um, uh, rerun times, that definitely had an impact. There are people that just can't watch it on Sunday night and may or may not have thought to TiVo it or whatever. Right. Um, and, and there's a loss in that. And, you know, it would be nice to see them put up all the episodes online and have them available for a long time. But, you know, Jeff probably won't do that either since he's kind of written it off. But, um, you know, the bottom line is through um, social media, which you guys do an amazing job of, by the way. One last thing I'll say about that. It was very enjoyable to be able to watch that show and tweet with you guys live during that show. That's something that, again, 10 years ago you couldn't do, but you guys embraced it and did it really well. And in, in hindsight, I think that's part of where my emotional attachment came from was that you weren't just doing a show and then sitting back waiting for the checks to come in. You actually stayed involved and with the fan base, and that was very impactful, at least for me. And based on Twitter, which is my big thing, I, I think a lot of people agree with that. You guys just really went all out and did a great job, but it came from the heart. At least it feels that way. Yeah, no, it did. It was fun for us, too. I mean, as I said, we all got together. We looked forward to it, you know, watching the show mm -hmm. together and and tweeting with everybody and that we, you know, we'd say, oh, my God, so-and-so just said this about you, Sean. And, <laughs> and I mean, we just, we had so much fun doing it. You know, it's really something yep. we looked forward to. It wasn't a chore. It was something that we, right. we couldn't wait for Sunday nights to all get together and, you know, get our and iPads that's what TV or is computers. All about. Yeah, yeah, it was and really. And that's definitely what TV is all about. And when you, when you published or posted that picture of everybody in your bedroom watching, you know, the whole family watching mm -hmm. it, I mean, that mm -hmm. sealed it up, right? I mean, you can't get any more real and into it than that. And I just think, you know, there's uh, obviously I'm going on and on praising you guys, but I really well, think you guys you. did an I'm amazing job. thank you. I'm so happy. Job. Listen, after the last <laughs> couple of days, it feels really nice to, to hear that because it's been pretty depressing. Well, just, you know, when you get depressed, remember your faith and just look on, uh, online at social media. You've got a lot of fans behind you. Obviously, we need to grow that. And there's a team of people, you know, giving of their time openly and willingly to do that, of which I'm part of. But there's a reason for that. You know, there's something great there. And I do believe that door may have closed, but other doors are going to open. You've been in the business long enough to know. You just never know what's going to happen next. And every day is a journey. And, and that's part of life, right? You have to embrace it. Well, we have a great idea underway of how to kind of restructure the show a little bit based on what actually mm -hmm. is going on in um in our lives and and Ashley's life right now and mm -hmm. I can't talk about it sort of yet but it sure. it it could if you know if the right network picks it up and it it could really be something that I think could be a show even better than this one but it would still be all of the family and you know, all of us together, but with just a particular that's the, kind that's of the core component. theme yeah, the core to component it. And I can't, I can't give it away yet, but it, <laughs> if, if it happens, if it happens, <laughs> it, it could be something really exciting. Well, I'm not going to ask you to give it away. I know how the business works, but uh, <laughs> you, I'm, sure, I'm sure you know that uh, uh, the fact that you're telling people that you have an idea is going to, you know, compel people like myself to really go out there and push – to help so that when the door, you know, when you're knocking on someone's door with this new idea, they know there's a, a group of people behind you, hopefully enough that meets their demographic requirements, that it'll be a slam dunk for you and everybody lives happily ever after. Oh, that's the other thing that we were told by, um, uh, that we didn't even really realize when we signed on to do, to do it with them, is that they really are targeting the 25-year-olds. and. Right. To me, that just sort of closes the door to all the other people out there. I mean, I know we had some people in their 20s who were viewers because there's a couple of young girls that come to my mind immediately that were right. yep. that were big supporters, and you probably see them on on Twitter, and God bless them. And, um, Absolutely. So we did have younger viewers, but our our average viewer was, you know, a, a little older, like, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, whatever. Right. 60s, are you supposed to just discount people because of their age? That's what I don't – that mm -hmm. to me isn't well, fair, and it's not right, you know? I mean, God knows. Well, I think I'm, Jeff, 
you're 29 or 39. Yeah, I'm 39. Uh, <laughs> 39. Jeff, Jeff, if I remember correctly, I wish. Jeff, came, yeah, Jeff came a decade ago from VH1 where that was kind of their core thing. Um, so I think that, you know, when you look back 10 years ago and everybody was going after that demographic, well, that demographic is 10 years older now. And 10 years ago, they thought there were enough of them to count that they need to realize, oh, they're in a different bracket now, but the quantity is still the same. So there de- to your point, there definitely is, is a viable market there. And I think that TV executives are reluctant to change and social media uh, has certainly helped them see a different light, but they're still, still very late adopters in that philosophy. And I think this is a, uh, this proves it just in this scenario right here, you know, again, Jeff, VH1, a different demographic now with E still thinking like you did 10 years ago, not to discount that, but, but you don't also can't discount the fact that that demographic is 10 years older and is now prime for your show. Yeah. And you can't discount people who are in their forties or fifties or sixties or thirties or whatever, you know, I mean, right. it's the advertisers too. And you know what, it's that, that thing about everybody wanting the, you know, 18 to 39 year olds and just kind of forgetting about everybody else, which I think is really unfair. You know, it's a real kind of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like sexism, it's ageism and, and right. are exactly. people no longer valuable when they're over, you know, 35. That's, that's wrong. That, that offends me. Cause I'm, it just offends me for, hmm. for, for people in general, for television viewers, you know? Right. Absolutely. And and financially, you know, people in the uh, in our age bracket, right, They uh, we have more money than we did when we were 18 to 25. So it's kind of weird how that works because we have more money to spend, so you'd think the advertisers would want to come to us because it takes less of us to make the same revenue. Yeah, I've never understood that. I mean, people that are, are 20, I certainly didn't have money in my early 20s to, you right. know, splurge on things I saw on television. And exactly. people, as they get older, have a lot more money available to spend. So I never got that either, John. But you know what? That mm-hmm. seems to be what they base everything on. Well, hopefully we're going to change the world together. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Yeah. Right. Hoorah, so I don't want to monopolize all the time. Yeah. Thanks. So, so uh, thank you very much for taking the call. It was a pleasure uh, and an honor to speak with both of you. And uh, I'm behind this show 100, percent and I'm part of that army. So you can count on me. Oh, thank you, John. Well, it's great to to um, to hear your voice and meet you over the uh, radio. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you, John. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now, before I pick up your surprise call, I have to agree with John about the age, and then with you, too, you know, about the age thing. Um, I definitely did not have the money, but I also didn't have the time or take the time to watch TV at, at the age yeah, you're of 20 or 25. <laughs> yes, I was, I was out with my friends. I was dating. I was working. I was doing 10 trillion yeah. different things. And, right. and the people that have the time to watch the TV and have the money now are being discounted, and that is so, so unfair. And we've said that so many times with, like, the soap operas. They try to reach that demographic of 18 to 34. Well, those 18 to 34-year-old people are having new families, are out and doing things. They are not sitting there watching the TV, and they are not spending the money like we do. So they need to get over that. I agree. I agree. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so we'll have to make that very clear to the next network. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be a network that's that's willing to appeal to, you know, not just the, the all age 25-year-olds. Mm-hmm. Right. And your show has all the ages going for it. So, you know, there's no... Yeah, we were from, from, you know, from 15 on up. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And, you know, I watched um, not only to watch the show because it was your whole family, but I watched because I knew you from interviewing you and for TV appearances and so forth, but I also know George from things. Right. So in, my, in watching this, I got to know your kids and your extended family. So there, you know, I'm a fan well, of all of them now. There you so that, go. That, and that happens with a lot of people, I'm sure. But let me go ahead and take your surprise caller. 
Oh, I can't um, imagine who this is. <laughs> you're excited. live on the air now, surprise caller. Hi, darling. How are you? Who is this? Oh, my darling, you'll remember me. We have a mutual friend, and I always speak to you, and you've been so kind to me going through my process. Is this Eddie? Yes, darling, hi. Hi, Eddie, how are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. I'm a little bit upset because, Alana, I tried so hard with Jeff. I, I tried so hard with Bonnie. And unfortunately, you even called up. I think you 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 even called up Jeff's office, as I as I recall. I called and I did get through because I did use a little muscle. And um, when they asked who it is, I said, you know, I said I um, I'm calling from John Collins' press office. They put me right through. <laughs> and I, I love it. Oh yeah, and to tell you the truth. Um, it worked, and um, I, went, I did tell Joan what I did, and she said, hey, that's perfectly okay. But, however... Oh, God bless her. Oh, yeah, she is wonderful. But I just have to tell you, today, you are a remarkable breath of fresh air on the doctors. I can't get over how fabulous you look. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you so um, much. I- I have to tell you, I I got off the uh, internet with George, and he also said, Eddie, you did such a great job, and you know I tried. But however, you well, know, well, you I know didn't. what? Maybe it's not all for naught because, uh, you know, as I said, um, uh, Bonnie is head of NBC Universal, and they have other cable networks, and you know, it's always good for them to know that the fans love the show and they're disappointed and, and uh, you know, they might be open to doing something else. You never know, oh, you yeah. know. So yeah. you guys have done a great service for us, honestly. Well, a great, I have to tell you service. something. I have to tell you, you know, when I worked uh, with Joan on Dynasty, there were always parties on Wednesday nights. Everybody made a Dynasty party. Well, I had it in my house. A Stuart Hamilton party, every Sunday night, about ten of us would get together. Oh, look at Alana, what is she wearing? Look at George, how debonair. Look at Ashley, look at, you know, we would just, and we would get the popcorn, or I would make a dinner before, and that whole hour was our fun. It was like Dynasty, but then more down to earth. And that's what really... That's what really drew me to the show, and if you recall, I mean, I'm sure you don't, but I was a Studio 54 regular in the heyday, sitting right across from Diana Ross, Cher, and there you were with Rod and oh my Bianca, God, yes. with Bianca, and I mean, it was amazing then, and of course I've changed over the years, we all have, but those are memories that will last with us for a lifetime. Yes, that's amazing. Oh my God, those days! I I just I love seeing some of those pictures. Uh, well, I do. I have you know I have Ron Jalala, a close friend that were paparazzi and 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 I'm still on now. And when I go out to different events, they'll photograph me and all. You know, if I go out to some events in New York or if I'm in LA, doesn't matter. But um, they have ton. I have tons of your pictures. Tons. Oh, I love it when you when you tweet them because it's so great to see those and remember them. And I always think, my God, where did you get that? That's such a. I, and I always remember usually where I was and what I was doing. And it's it's uh, it's just crazy. I know, and Alana, I want to also tell you about Rearview Mirror. What an inspiring book! And however, all the things that you have gone through in life, and look at how you are now, and. You know, I'm going through a little bit hard time myself now, but I know you are, up. and I just, I really pray for you, and and I, I know, know that, that, and you told me, and I, I really, you've been in my prayers ever since. I know, sweetheart, and it's amazing that I found the doctors at Mount Sinai who were able to treat this HPV virus and um, get it knocked out of me. So I'm, I'm really on the road. I'm 74% there already. 
Oh, fantastic. That is just great news. And you know, like you, a positive attitude, head up, straight up with those heels on, and keep walking, because you know what? (laughs) They are not going to bring us down. Well, that's the way you have to look at it, and those are the people that, you know, that recover and and go on with their lives are the people that have those kinds of attitudes, and, you know, um, and, and you've got it, so keep it up, and I'm, I'm going to... You, you've been a, a great... You always keep me, I know that, and, you know, while I'm coming out in December, as you know, Joan is having her thing at Julian, so... Um, I will definitely be there, and I'll be, you know, looking forward to seeing you there as well. Well, I'm going to be seeing, I would imagine I will be seeing Joan, um, because there's a memorial for Jackie, who, dear Jackie. I know. know. And I'm certain she must be coming out for it, so I will will be seeing her when she she comes out, and uh, it's just been such a huge loss for her because she and Jackie were so close. I, I know, and, and to tell you the truth, when I found out, I have a friend that worked for People Magazine, and when it broke that Saturday night, she called me, and she said, I said, oh, please, Anne, it's a hoax. You know they do this to many celebrities. So, you know, I never talk, Alana, you'll get to know me better, but I never talk to the press, and I, you know, when I worked with Joan or whoever I worked with in the entertainment business, I was always loyal to everybody. So, however, when that story broke, I I did Google it down, but I didn't believe it. So the only one I can call to verify it would be Joan's secretary at the time was Judy Breyer. Yeah. And when I called Judy, Judy said to me, oh, Eddie, I, I, first of all, you know, she always asked for me and everything. She says, no, Eddie, you know, Joan is in the south of France. I said, I know that. She but she died? I said, yes. And me, I mean, I said, do you want me to call Joan? Oh, Joan, do I said, I mean, I will call her, but, you know, to condone her. I didn't know, she, you know, she probably didn't find out until later in the day. But My it gosh. is such a terrible loss because I saw Jackie in Bergdorf Goodman several times uh, when she was doing her tour with the books and Angelo's, and we met. And she said, oh, my God, Joan always said that you're a character of her. And it's true. She said, you look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she was a fabulous woman, Jackie, and a huge loss to all of us. She was a good yeah, friend for years. There's not God too many her. left of the Hollywood circuit. You fit in. There's, um, you know, not too many Joan uh, that keep themselves going fabulously and, you know, Everybody's on a different level in life, and, and and however, and another door is opening for you, sweetheart. Trust me. Well, thank and you, thing, Eddie, and thank you for all your support, and you will remain in our prayers as well. Thank you so much for calling my in. Pleasure, and I love you, Alana. You take care, and regards to everyone on show. And Pam, love you. You too, oh, sweetheart. You, too, you take care. Bye, take darling. Take care. We'll talk, talk soon. Yes, bye, bye. Bye, honey. Bye, bye. Uh, what well, a great you got heart. that rather it's, quickly. You found, you figured out who he was. <laughs> yes, I did, and I'd never heard his voice before that. But that's amazing, and what what a great heart. You know, that's just as I said in the beginning. It's just a blessing that all of the people that we've been able to come in contact with through through doing the show, and it wouldn't have happened if we hadn't have done it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I. Eddie and I have spoken on the phone a couple times now, and I'm totally in love with this guy. He's such a sweet and <laughs> such I just a doll. wish him all the best, and my prayers are for him. And I'm I'm so glad that he's recovering from this. Me too. Me too. So, not to change the subject, but another very, very important thing that that you are part of is the Farrah Fawcett Foundation, and I would love for you to speak more about that and let our listeners know what it's about and what you do for it. Well, when Farrah was uh, diagnosed with cancer, she started a foundation, and which didn't really, um, she didn't activate it um, because she was busy fighting cancer and and as you know we spent a good part of three years together as she battled cancer and traveled to germany many times and and um i knew that she wanted this foundation to really do 
uh, to support cutting edge research and especially research in the kinds of cancers that that weren't that were under researched and as was the kind of cancer she died from and so after her death, I was asked to become president of the foundation, the Farrah Fawcett Foundation, which I happily said yes to. And I thought, well, gosh, I don't know much about running a foundation, but I'll learn. And um, I had a friend, Sherry Lansing, who had um, started her own foundation and been one of the founders of Stand Up to Cancer. And she was wonderful. She said, yes, of course you can do this. You know, you can put anything you put your mind to. You're smart. You know, it's... uh, it's not that hard. And I just learned it. I mean, I learned the bylaws and what you did it and how it needed to run. And and it's been a blessing. We officially opened the doors in 2010. And I think the thing that I'm the most proud of is, is we have a, a partnership with Stand Up to Cancer on one specific project. We have our own research team um, at uh, Dana-Farber. And we just gave a big event in the beginning of September um, to raise money for the research team, and we raised um, right around $350,000. And so I'm really I'm proud of some of the things that we've accomplished during um, since the doors to the foundation opened in these last five years. And it's my passion. You know, it's I wanted to do something. Mm-hmm for a long time to help and give back um, to the world in some way. And I I didn't know quite what it was going to be. And and then this came along, and it's never anything I would have thought of doing. But but after spending those years with Farah and watching her battle this dreadful disease, and it really did make me passionate about wanting to make a difference, you know, uh, because that's what she always wanted to do. She wanted to make a difference. And if she was going to have to have this struggle with cancer, she wanted to use it to try to help other people. And I think she did. She helped so many people while she was still alive that were struggling with cancer by inspiring them, by corresponding with them. Um, she had the biggest heart in the world. I mean, she was always thinking about other people even when she was in the midst of, you know, of her most painful struggles. And so I just wanted to see this foundation grow and thrive and do something in her name that that would be important and that would make a difference. Yeah, and, you know, she accomplished all that, of course, now with your help, with you being the president and running things and and getting it out there and getting the funds needed for the research and... and, uh, God bless you. God bless you for doing that because yeah. every single person in this world has been touched by cancer in one way or another, if it's themselves or a loved one. Oh, um, absolutely. Friend, I mean, know, so. there's not anyone we know who hasn't been touched by cancer. And um, I think that's, that's, you know, anything that any of us can do to help is 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 wonderful no matter how little and and I would love for people to go to the Farrah Fawcett Foundation website, which is farrahfawcettfoundation.org, and they can read all about the foundation and what we're doing and what we have done in the past and some of the things we support. And um, I just would, you know, we, we, we want to the more people, the better that know about it and that know what we're doing. And I feel like it's a... It's it's a wonderful way to carry on the legacy of a really incredibly wonderful, kind, loving, talented icon, you know? I mean, right. she right. was. She was right. the last person exactly. in the world you'd ever, ever expect to get cancer because she was so full of life and so vital and healthy and, you know, so it just, it's, it's, that's the way cancer works, you know, it doesn't play favorites. Exactly. Yeah, I I know I have to agree with that. It's my my mom died of breast cancer at the age of 52. She was diagnosed at 49. And would mm-hmm. I have ever expected Sorry. that? No, because breast cancer doesn't even run in my family. She was the first one to get it. So, wow. um I also want to mention to our listeners that on the Farrah Fawcett uh, foundation.org site 
you can also make donations there as well. So every penny helps, you know, do it for yourself, do it for a loved one, do it for strangers, you know, because what you put out there comes back to you tenfold. If you do good, you're going to get good back, and I, I yes, totally believe does. in that. And we also have a um, the, the fairfaucet.com website where they are going to be selling uh, – T-shirts and different things. There's a there's a store, a web store on that site with different designs and T-shirts and various things that are really quite terrific and that um, that are the our percentage. What we make from it all goes to the foundation and toward cancer research. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know about that website, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and check that out once the yeah, show is over. Dot com. Okay, yeah, I'll check that out, definitely. Um, in the meantime, I know David, who's been very quiet. <laughs> yeah, David, you know, these, we've <laughs> just been talking over you, and just, <laughs> we haven't stopped blabbing. That is fine. That is he fine. has a couple of questions for yes, you, so David, go ahead. Alana, how, ha- how has uh, chemo sensitivity, sensitivity training change the ways of traditional chemo and radiation treatments? Well, I, I think chemo sensitivity testing is a very important thing because when Farah had her her cancer, they they gave her radiation and they gave her chemo and they gave her the standard chemo that they would give to that particular cancer. But unfortunately, it didn't work on her particular cancer and therefore it metastasized and went to her liver and when we went to Germany, the first thing they did, because it's not standard here to do chemosensitivity testing and insurance doesn't pay for it, and um, the first thing they did when we went to Germany was they, they did chemosensitivity testing and they learned that the chemo she had been given here did not work on her particular cancer. And they, what they do is they take a sample of the blood, the cancer cells in the blood, and they see which chemo or which antibody fights that particular kind of cancer and so it gives them a way to pinpoint the exact chemo that's going to work now the problem is cancer mutates so that chemo may work for you know three months and then it may stop working so it has to be retested you know and changed accordingly but that's a that's a very good question we we sponsored a a conference here a few years back on chemosensitivity testing to try to get it done more by doctors here in this country. Definitely. I I never even heard of that before until David had mentioned it, so I I have to look more into it. Yeah, it's fascinating, and they they do it in this country, but it's just not common practice. And it, okay. and I feel I feel and that it should. should be, but that's just my you know unscientific opinion. I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but mm-hmm. I believe in it very much. And and uh, Farah's doctor, Dr. Lawrence Perot, who's a leading oncologist here in in Santa Monica at St. John's, um, he believes in it, and he um, he ran the conference that we did um, at that the Farrah Fawcett Foundation did a few years back. He organized it and put it together, and doctors came from all over the world to participate and to speak, and it was really quite a, a very um, um, interesting and uh, experience and very informative. Exactly, and I'm going to look more into that, and that's something that should be done more often, I agree. David, oh, yeah, you had one more question. Yes, I did. Um, okay. What are the successful steps to cancer prevention, and are there any success stories that you'd like to share with us? Well, I think that in, in, in cancer prevention, it's I think that, you know, 30 years ago, doctors really weren't into, um, heart doctors weren't into the kind of healthy diet and the things that they advocate today you know, to keep your heart healthy. And I think it's in, in the same regard. There's, I think there's many things that, that you can do to help prevent cancer or that people can do once they've gotten cancer and gotten into remission or, you know, it's a, there's a, a book called The Anti-Cancer Lifestyle. 
and it's a book by a Dr. Severin Schreiber, and it's hyphenated, Severin, S-E-R-V-A-N, hyphen, Schreiber, S-C-H-R-E-I-B-E-R, and he's an MD and a researcher, and he unfortunately died himself of brain cancer, but... Once he was diagnosed, he started delving into all the reasons that cancer is on the upswing as opposed to other diseases which are on the downswing. And Mm -hmm. this is a wonderful book because it helps you with, I could never even begin to address it in in the time we have, but it helps you learn about diet and um, not only diet, the things in our environment that are contributing to cancer, whether it be chemicals or pesticides or, you know, plastics or so many things that um, that are, you know, whether it's the water we're drinking or the air we're breathing or um, there's just so many different things. And, and diet's very important. You know, diet and lifestyle is so important to cancer prevention and to helping once a person has gotten cancer, you know, um, to, to healing. So that's, that's what I would, I would recommend. And they're, they're actually his family. One of his family members is doing or has done a documentary on, on him and on this book. And I just think it's something that, that, Everybody, you know, I just saw something on television last night that said that a scientific study had just come out that um, meats, um, like what a, bacon and ham, meats with nitrates in them, you know, that are that are what are they called? Those kind of cured meats, bacon, ham, sausage. That they, yeah, they were saying um, processed meat, processed yes, meat, processed, processed meat exactly meat, yes. contribute mm-hmm. to uh, to cancer, to intestinal mm-hmm. cancers, and mm-hmm. that's something I've felt for a long time. But now there's been an actual scientific study that's come out, you know, and. And to prove that, and so it's things like that. You know, they're saying, you know, don't don't eat so much red meat. Let's let's uh, back off of that, and you know, eat uh, eat a healthier diet. Um, my grandmother died of colon cancer, and you know, as I said earlier, I grew up in Texas, and my grandmother, God bless her, she, she we lived out in the country, and she lived, you know, she ate a lot of bacon fat, and everything was you know, fried and bacon, and, I mean, we had our, you know, our good things, too, our fresh vegetables that um, she'd raise in the garden. But, you know, there were a lot of um, a lot of unhealthy patterns. You know, you cooked your vegetables with a lot of salt pork and bacon and ham. And <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I think that's very important, the lifestyle part of it. And I know there was a second part to your question, David, and I don't remember it. <laughs> Uh, if oh. you, I think if you had any success success stories you want to share. Any success stories from them, yes. From, um, you know, you mean people I know in the foundation or from, from the work we've done, the cancer? Um, yeah, from the work you've done. Aspect. Well, I, I, I do know um, there's one woman that survived, uh, and she's, she works a lot with us, um, uh, and she's uh, a cancer survivor. She she had uh, anal cancer, as Vera did, and uh, but she was lucky. She was able to to get it in time, and she's been in remission quite a number of years. And she speaks to people often that sometimes if someone will call the foundation that that has that kind of cancer, and they want to information we can we we are we recommend her and she speaks to a lot of people and we went to a girls school to talk about um, HPV related cancers and how important it is to have the HPV vaccination so um, that one doesn't get those kind of cancers and she went with she and I spoke and uh, um, Dr. Ellis Reinhers who's head of our research team at Dana-Farber spoke and so we're trying to raise awareness in in this whole area, but um, you know she's one of the success stories who had the exact same cancer that Farah did, but you know she made it through. And there are lots of those. Oh, God you bless know. her. 
Yeah. Um, I meet people all the time, you know, who say to me, oh, I had breast cancer, or I had this, and, you know, I'm, I've, um, I've passed my 10-year mark, and um, so there are a lot of people that um, that survive, that go into remission, and that go on and lead long, healthy lives. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And the more mm-hmm. those people, the more those survivors talk about it in public, um, the more aware everybody else will be and, and know to go and get their testing done. And just one more thing about my mom, when she found out she had breast cancer at the age of 49, she had never gone for a mammogram. And she had felt a lump in her, um, I believe it was her right breast. And she went in for a mammogram, and that one was fine, but they found a lump in her left breast that she didn't know about, and that's the one that turned out to be cancerous. So since my mother was diagnosed with that and passed away, I started going for mammograms at the age of 30. Well, that's a smart thing to do, you know, and I think um, without, you know, doing it too too often at, at an early right. age and giving our bodies more radiation, but women, women right. need to, um, especially if you've had it in your, your, your family, but I think all women need to be really aware of that because, you know, um, awareness and, and prevention go hand in hand. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that... Everybody needs to pay attention to their bodies. Are you listening? Everybody out there, pay attention to your bodies. Take care of your body because nobody else is going to. Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> so, well, listen, I can. Yep. I, I thank you all very much for having me on and having all the, the the people calling in, and it's it's been great talking with uh, talking with you all. Yes, and I was going to let you go, but before I do, I want to mention that you're on Twitter at Alana K. Stewart, but what is your Instagram? Same one, Alana K. Stewart. Same thing? Okay. All right, good. All right, and no matter how you pronounce it, she'll tweet you. (laughs) That's right, Alana, Alana, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Oh, you take care, Alana, and um, I I just love you dearly, and we're fighting for you. Well, yeah, we thank are. you both, really. Thank you so much. That means so much to me and to my whole family. And God willing, we will, um, you know, we'll hopefully be back on, on television and on a different network, and we will keep you posted as soon as we hear anything. Well, I thank oh, you for thank that. You. Thank you for taking the time, and you enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah. Give my love to the rest of your family, please. All right. Thank you so much, Pam. Bye, David. You guys Bye. Bye, Alana. Thank Bye-bye. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Um, I'm telling you, I, I've spoken with Alana before. Um, David, I don't believe that you did that interview. I believe it was Dawn that did it with me. Um, yep. And we we had aired that episode um, on Farrah Fawcett's birthday, um, and we set it up that way. When I had reached out to Alana, um, she said that she was going to be celebrating her birthday, and that's what we did. And we spoke about Farrah and the, the foundation and the book and things that we touched on here. So any of the listeners want to go back, I believe that was two years ago, a year or two years ago, and it was okay. in... Yeah. I, I believe, and it was in January. So all of the previous episodes, interviews that we've done are on Take2Radio.com, and that's with the number two. Um, you can also find them here on Blog Talk Radio and um, on Stitcher, Spreaker, and TuneIn, and iTunes. Those are all, you know, the mobile apps, and it's all free. There's no charge to listen to any of them. And, and, and the other one. And Apple... TV, you said? On Apple TV. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, Um, you can reach um, on Apple TV. You can go to your podcasts and do a search for Take Two Radio, and you will find it. Yeah, that's a new one to me, so I'm so glad that you found that because I know a lot of people use Apple products. I myself don't have one, so maybe that's why I didn't know about it, too. (laughs) But, yeah, there's many different ways. Um, You can just go directly to our website, though, and find it there. 
Um, I also want to mention again, be sure to go to farrahfawcettfoundation.org, uh, read what they have on there, and donate if you can. Go to farrahfawcett.com, uh, buy a T-shirt. The funds go to directly to um, raising funds, or I should say, the money goes directly to raising funds for cancer research and prevention. Um, we didn't get to talk a lot about her book, uh, Alana's book. It's uh, a memoir called Rearview Mirror. You will absolutely love it. I mean, it, it will make you cry but also appreciate how strong she is and how she was able to get through it all. And then also her book called uh, My Journey with Farah: A Story of Life, Love, and Friendship, another um heartbreaking but again you'll laugh at certain points and and i don't remember if both of them had pictures but i know that rear view mirror had pictures in there so it's kind of a, a, a walk down memory lane for those of you that are familiar with alana for throughout the years and um, her marriage to rod stewart her marriage to george hamilton the people she hung out with so those are both very good reads and uh follow her on twitter don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Take Two Radio and David's at Take Two Radio Crew. We will be promoting and pushing the Stewarts and Hamiltons to different networks. So if you follow us there, be sure to retweet it and also reach out to the networks as well to to get them back on TV because we love them and we're not letting go. And I think that's about it for now. David, do you have any last words? No. Uh, no, ma'am, I think, uh, you covered everything. Okay, thanks. We'll be back on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time with Martha Byrne and also possibly one of her fellow castmates from her soap. Now, it's David, it's As the World Turns, correct? It's As the World Turns, yes. Okay, and also from her new web series called Wait. W-E-I-G-H-T, and we'll be talking with her about all of that and more. So join us at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll be putting that on the website tonight and getting a link out. So take care, everybody. Thank you to all of our callers. We really appreciate you calling in and love each and every one of you. Take care. God bless. God bless you all. Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com.